building a sustainable biotech ecosystem revolves around a number of factors. I think some of the raw ingredients that are necessary at the, at the input level include having strong academic and medical center anchors in, in that particular geography, having a strong and repeatable talent pool and talent will be required at many stages of company formation and will require great amounts of diversity associated with building a biotechnology company over the long term. So it's scientific expertise, it's technical expertise, it's regulatory, it's clinical, but it's business, it's finance, it's seasoned managerial expertise. Having a hub that and a, and a geography that is growing organically, that type of talent, but also is an attractive enough location where you can acquire talent from other locations to be in that particular hub is also a necessary ingredient. I think a fuel for uh, a sustainable biotech hub is government NIH grant funding. As you look at sustainable biotech ecosystems like Boston and San Francisco and San Diego, they certainly have all the attributes that I've mentioned, but they also have a, a core pipeline of grants being invested into the academic institutions around commercializable ideas. So that's another thing that you have to look for. And in fact, we're developing a platform at Portal called the Portal Innovation Index, where we're using inputs to look at number of patent filings, number of SBIR grants, paper citations, to begin to identify almost with data analytics and machine learning, building a database where we can uh, predict that next emerging John Rogers that is going to be the emerging successful innovator in, in a given region. And so inputs like patents, and, and, and I would say also having a live, work, play environment. As we see talent, they like to be in places where they can live, work, and play where they see others like them, that they feel a sense of camaraderie. So much of it, that people vibe is a really important piece of what is the glue of an ecosystem. So I think those are some really important raw elements that have to happen, I think, at the organic level. I think if you look at Chicago and other cities with similar attributes, what I think is really interesting is over the course of the past decade, universities like University of Chicago, Northwestern, UIC, Urbana-Champaign, Wisconsin, et cetera, have all invested very heavily into their innovation architecture, and they've recruited a new type of faculty member. So I think this is a key ingredient that's often overlooked. Having at the core of a phenotype of faculty that looks a lot like the typical Stanford or MIT faculty member. You're starting to see a lot of those types of <clears throat> individuals show up in the region by virtue of the investments that the university have made to attract those individuals. So I think you can't have a great ecosystem if you don't have great repeater innovators like that, that are there. And then lastly, you do need capital. And I think there you do need a macro environment that can support the growth of ecosystems that are early and fragile in nature, but have a lot of upside potential and can, can become sustainable over time. So one venture firm alone can't lift an ecosystem, but one platform can catalyze and be the scaffold around which capital can aggregate, rally around. And over time, like in places like Philadelphia, where you see it become you know, a, a really hot spot for gene and cell therapy, for example, one faculty member can change the, the footprint and the impact of the entire ecosystem. And so I think those are some of the key features, but I, I think creating the conditions where the Jim Wilson's and Bob Langer's and the John Rogers and, and Milan Murchitz's want to be, that to me drives everything.